costume. Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is Shiloh and I am a cross stitcher and knitter living in Nova Scotia, Canada. You can find me on Instagram as at xstitchmd or on Ravelry as at Dr. Shiloh. I try to post all of my knitting projects on Ravelry and I try to update my Instagram fairly regularly so you can keep track of my progress. So it's been about a month since my last video and I think doing videos on a monthly schedule is going to work really well with my schedule just because work's been a bit busier lately and I've been working most weekends. However, I do still have plenty of time to stitch in the evenings and if I'm on call, I don't necessarily have to go into the hospital, I just have to be available so I can definitely get some stitching time uh, while I'm on call, which is great. So I have a lot of stuff to show you since my last video, lots of progress, a couple of finishes, knitting finishes, no stitching finishes, and I was really hoping that my Bonded by the Rain cross stitch piece would be framed so that I could show you that this time but it is still in the process of getting framed. <laughs> so I dropped off a couple weeks ago, but one of the mats was back ordered. And so it's just taking a little bit longer than expected. But as soon as I get it back, I will be posting on Instagram. So make sure to check it out there. I'm so excited. It's gonna look so, so good. So very excited about that. Okay, so lots of stuff to show you. So let's just dive right in with what I've been stitching. So before I even show you my stitching, first of all, I have to show you this absolutely adorable needle minder introvert. It is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I got this on Etsy from a uh, busy beaver boutique. I'll link it below, but it's like just so, so cute. I can't even just, I love it so much. I got my friend one of them too, because I was like, this is just the most perfect needle minder that has ever existed. So the first whip I'll show you is my biggest whip and that is Bewitched Park by Artisy Cross Stitch. And it's based on the painting by Leonid Afrimov. This is going to be a massive one. The uh, total number of stitches in this is like 186,450 or something like that. And the finished measurements on 18 count are around 18.5 inches high by 30 inches wide, something like that. Anyway, it's massive. But I have made some great progress on it. So I'm going to just zoom in here and show you. I decided to start working along the left side edge and I made it all the way down to the bottom. So that is very exciting. So that is the full, I don't even know if you can see, this is very difficult. <laughs> I can't back up far enough, but that's the full, uh, okay, let's see. There we go. That is the full uh, height, length, whatever of the piece. This is a real attractive look for me right now. <laughs> that's the full height of the piece. So I got a long leads to go because it's 30 inches across, but this is about, I think I'm at about 7,500 stitches complete so far. So I mean, it's like less than 1% done. But how fun is this? You can start to see, here's one of the tree chunks coming along here and kind of this area of the piece all the way across is these lighter yellows and then there's these darker colors. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. So I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada and it's like kind of a rustic Ada. I got this from Michaels and for this giant piece, it was, the piece was like 29 inches by 37 inches and it was like $10, so it's super cheap. Um, but yeah, I'm stitching with two strands of DMC over one square of Ada, and I think the coverage is pretty good. I mean, in some of these black areas, you can see there's a bit of the fabric showing fruit through, but from back here, you can't tell at all. So I think it looks good. And yeah, basically what I've been doing is I'm stitching this using, um, Pattern Keeper. So I have my chart uploaded on the Pattern Keeper app on my Android tablet. And what I've been doing is just picking... I started in this corner and kind of picked a symbol and then just stitched it however it appeared, which kind of got me over to this area. And then as soon as I finished that color, I'd go to the stitch below it and stitch that wherever it appeared. And I kind of just did that all the way down. Oops, sorry for knocking the camera. I'm just so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing and kind of working my way down. And the nice thing about this piece, because it's the large version, um, there's a lot less confetti in it. So because it's kind of a larger chart, there's a lot more chunks of color, which makes it fun because it's not hugely confetti-ish. So yeah, I just, I can't stop showing it. There are, I think I mentioned this before, but there are 33,000 stitches of the color black alone. It's going to keep me busy for a long time, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think the thing, the key for me is just to put in couple hundred stitches every few days, it adds up and it's really exciting. I'm super excited I reached the bottom just to see the full 
height of it is really cool and feels like giant progress. So that's exciting. So that is my Bewitched Park. Here are some other whips I've been working on that are a bit longer standing whips. So this first one is the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 Stitch Along, which is entitled The Fruit of Plenty. And this is a gorgeous chart by Jacob. It is just so beautiful and I love it so much. And uh, yeah, I'm making pretty good progress on it. I mean, I am very far behind, but that is because I'm working on lots of other pieces, including massive ones. Uh, so here's where I'm at. And I have finished uh, five, no, four. Oops. <laughs> I'm working on block number five. So, oh, you can kind of see through the fabric. Let's do like this. Okay. So I'm working on the fifth block, which is this one here. And I'm about two thirds of the way complete it. And like, look at this cute little squirrel right here. It's adorable. So I'm working right now on this area, which is um, a tree that you kind of mostly are stitching the background. And sorry, my camera's going all wonky with this fabric color, but that's the color right there. So I am loving this. I am stitching this on 36 count Ash Rose Edinburgh linen with two strands of floss over two linen threads. I love the coverage of two strands on 36 count. I know lots of people love one strand on 36 count. It's all your personal preference. I really like two strands, personally. And my colors that I'm using are, the darker color is DMC 902, and the lighter color is DMC 3722. So that's my Fruit of Plenty, and it is so pretty. And it's just a joy to stitch on. So this, a new part comes out every month. Not too late to start, go ahead and start it. I'm planning on starting one of the prior year stitch alongs in the next little bit because I have never finished any of them, but they're so fun to work on. So September's part was released at the first of the month and I'm behind, but the fun part is stitching it. And so who cares when I finish? The fun part is stitching, for me at least. So, <laughs> so that is my Modern Folk Embroidery piece. The next whip I've been working on is Patrick Quaker by Wienberg Designs. And this is a pattern I'm stitching along with Megan of Georgia Girl Stitching, and we're using the hashtag Cuz Quaker Style because we love Quakers. <laughs> so here's where I'm at with this one. I've made a decent amount of progress on this over the last little bit, and I am just loving it. So I'm stitching this on 36 count Aqua Edinburgh linen with two strands of DMC over two, and it's all the called for DMC colors. So I added in this part here over the last little bit, and I actually stitched this in Ontario. So um, as many of you know, my family all lives in Ontario. Uh, I live here as just my boyfriend in Nova Scotia. And I was able to finally go back to Ontario after 18 months and see my family, which was so, so nice. I um, got to spend a long weekend with them over Labor Day. I was there for five days and it was just so good to be together with family. But I did bring my stitching and <laughs> this is what I worked on. And another fun fact, to me at least, was I forgot to bring my hoop with me and I am a diehard hoop stitcher. I love using my hoop, but I forgot to bring it with me and I had times where I wanted to stitch and I didn't have my hoop. So I actually stitched in hand using the sewing method. I didn't think I liked that and I, I don't love it, but I could definitely do it and I don't think my stitches look that bad. So this motif, this, this, and this were all stitched using the sewing method. And I think it looks pretty good. So good to know that I can do that in a pinch and I might try that more often. So that is my patchwork Quaker. So what do we have next? Let me show you my uh, Blackbird Designs Loose Feathers piece. So I am working on this one, which is called it, It's Spring Fever. And this is part of the uh, For the Birds series. So this is number one. There are nine pieces in the series and I'm switching them all together on one piece. So three across, three down. And here's what I have. Apologies, it's slightly wrinkled. Uh, here's what I have so far. So I'm stitching this with all the called for colors, which are a mixture of, let me see here, uh, Weeks Dye Works and, oh, I think they're all Weeks Dye Works. Yep, yeah, so I'm using all of the called for Weeks Dye Works flosses on 36 count vintage country mocha and linen by Zweiger, and I'm stitching again two over two on 36 count. That's my preferred method. <laughs> so yeah, really, really enjoying this. I love all these blues together. They're just so pretty. I have to do some back stitching here 
You can see there's some backstitch leaves and vines in here. So I haven't done that yet, but that will get done eventually. And I put my initial in and yeah, it's super cute. I think this is gonna look fabulous together. And I kind of pick on this one every once in a while and work on it and I'm really, really enjoying it. So all her designs are very fun. This um, chart series is still available. I got mine from 123 Stitch. So if you're interested in stitching it, you can get all the charts there. They're all sold individually. Next piece I did some work on is the Inheritance Sampler by Summer House Stitch Works. And I'm stitching this along with Ymir from Almond M&M's and someone else that I always forget their name. <laughs> they, the two of them uh, decided to do a stitch along of this chart and I just kind of jumped on in because I had already started it. So this is a gorgeous design and I am stitching it with all the called for things. <laughs> all the called for things. So it's 35 count lamb's wool linen and uh, Weak Style Works Whiskey and Gentle Art Blue Raspberry Jam. So here we go with that. This is 35 count and I'm stitching with two over two. Would you have guessed anything different? <laughs> so here it is and look how gorgeous this is. Like this blue is everything to me. Like I love this blue. I want to stitch a whole sampler in this blue one day. Um, it's so pretty. So these are my parents' initials. And the plan is there's three sets of initials in this. So one set will be my and my boyfriend's and then the other one will be his parents. So, so pretty, it's so pretty. I believe the hashtag for this stitch long is hashtag inheritance sampler SAL. If it's something different, I'll just write it there somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, um, but yeah, it's a really fun chart. I don't know. I got this on, uh, off of a stitching group on Facebook, I purchased it. So I don't know if you can still get this online, but I'll link it below if there's somewhere that you can get it, so. Also, something I've noticed is that this time around, I'm stitching a lot of charts from paper patterns, which is really different for me because I am usually a hardcore PDF person because I just love being able to stitch from my uh, iPad or my Android tablet and just mark off my patterns that way. Um, however, I did find a new cross stitch app. Someone had recommended it on Instagram and I forget who it is, but the app is called, and I'm going to mess this up too. One second. I have my iPad right here so I can show you <laughs> what it is. Uh, so the app is called Mark Up. Oh, why doesn't it say? Mark Up R XP. So I can show you a little bit of what it looks like. So that's what it looks like on my iPad. So what I do is I take a picture of the chart on my, um, take a picture of the paper chart and then I'll zoom in so you can't really see. Um, well, you can see a little bit here, but um, I take a picture of the chart and then I can upload it to this and then I can highlight off these stitches. So it's super handy. I really like it for uploading uh, paper patterns. Apparently Pattern Keeper has that feature too, but the uh, Android tablet I'm using for Pattern Keeper is pretty like out of date and cheap. And so I've had some trouble just like uploading and getting it to work. So I'm finding this markup R-XP to work a lot better. And it's making me want to stitch a lot more paper patterns because I can upload them and mark them off like I normally would. And I really, really enjoy that feature. So recommend checking it out. It's a free, this app is free for 30 days. And then I think you pay like $10 to get unlimited access to it. So I did the free 30 day trial to see if I liked it. And then I was like, yes, I love this. <laughs> so um, you can see I have quite a few, uh, quite a few patterns loaded in here right now. So that is very fun. You can see my <laughs> not very good camera skills. What they recommend actually is scanning your chart. So um, if you have a scanner, just scanning your chart and uploading the picture that way. So I want to try that because it's really hard to take a picture and get your chart straight and it needs to be straight to get the grid lines to align. So, so far I've been lazy and I've just been taking pictures and it's worked okay, but I'm going to try that for the next chart I do. So yeah, so check that app out, especially if you're someone that has an Apple device and has been like put off by it from getting Pattern Keeper because you don't have an Android tablet, try the markup R-XP because uh, it's really great. There's also a Facebook group that I'll link below and the um, designers of the app are on that Facebook group. So you can like put in requests or if you have any questions. I found it really helpful in just kind of learning how to use it because um, there's a lot of things where it's not like immediately clear how to do things, but they're really, really helpful in that Facebook group. So I recommend it. <laughs> Got my seal of approval. <laughs> okay, and now we have two, 
four, two <laughs> new starts, uh, both of which are in paper patterns. So this first one is Red Rhapsody by Rosewood Manor. And I was completely, completely enabled by Lori Holt, um, who has an amazing YouTube, Instagram, floss tube, that was the word I was trying to say, an amazing floss tube channel. And I saw her stitching this piece on it and I paused the video, went to one, two, three stitch, ordered the chart, ordered the floss, ordered the fabric. <laughs> so highly enabled, thank you, Lori. But I just love this chart. Um, Rosewood Manor, so that's Karen Kluba. She actually had a new one that just came out in the same series called Rusty Rhapsody. I'll put in a picture of it right here. And that is on my two stitch list because I love it. I'm just picturing like a wall in my house, just kind of like covered with all these monochromatic samplers and it's gonna be amazing, but I need a house that has a wall like that. So future home, that will be the main requirement I look for is lots of wall space to put hanged, hung. <laughs> to put cross stitch on the wall. Apologize for my terrible grammar. But yes, Red Rhapsody. So let me show you this one. Um, and I actually have another super cute needle minder on this, so I'll show you that. Um, also from Busy Beaver Boutique. So this one says, we lose ourselves in books, we find ourselves there too. I love reading. So this is a great one for me. Uh, so I am stitching this on 36 count antique white even weave by Fabric Flare. Just get myself situated here. And here's my start. I, yes, yeah, so like I said, I'm stitching this with uh, 36 count antique white even weave by Fabric Flare. And the floss I'm using is Sulky, uh, 12 weight petite cotton blendables. And the colorway is Red Works. So it's this really beautiful uh, purple to red variegated and it's just gorgeous so i'm really enjoying stitching this um i love there's a ton of alphabets on this one two three four five six like six different alphabets on that which i love um it's also really fun this chart also includes the patterns for these little bonus charts i love this one the welcome i think is so cute all of these are just adorable um so yeah i'm really really enjoying stitching this the letters are fun they go super fast and it's been very enjoyable i'll show it to you with this so yeah, and this even weave is lovely. So this is from Fabric Flare and it's just, it's not dyed. It's just like a plain even weave and it's just like lovely and soft and super easy to stitch on. So if you are um, wanting to try going from Ada to stitching over two, I'd highly recommend going to even weave um, as kind of the intermediate step before going to linen. Uh, with even weave, all of the threads are of the same thickness versus with linen, some of the threads are thick and some are thin, and that can make it a little bit trickier to kind of see the holes and knowing how to make your X's. Um, but for even weave, all of the threads are at the same thickness. So it's super easy to see, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. It's also cheaper than linen, so that's a nice bonus too. So that is Red Rhapsody. Okay, I may have saved the best for last because I am absolutely obsessed with this pattern. So I showed this on a previous episode. So this was, I don't know how to say it. And someone kindly told me how to say it and it, it's still hard to say. So that is it right there. <laughs> That's how you say it. And it is very much, my ancestors are turning in their graves because I am half Dutch and I do not know how to say this, but whatever. I'll just go, you know, whatever. I'm Canadian. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So that is the sampler and it's by Jeanette Douglas Designs, who is a Canadian designer. And how stunningly, amazingly gorgeous is this? Like I saw this and it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. So I bought the silk pack for this and I got the silk pack from Traditional Stitches and the silk pack was Fendi. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was definitely pricey, but it comes with um, all these different silks. So this is all the different silks that are required. So if you bought each of these individually, it would be very, very, very spendy instead of just very spendy. <laughs> and uh, the only problem is when I started this, I started it two over two and it calls for one strand, but I love how it's looking. So I might just have to buy a second thread pack. Well, good thing I'm working so much. <laughs> Help afford it. Uh, but here's my start and look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't even, I just, Honestly, I took a picture of this and I, when I was at work, I would just like open my phone and look at this picture and be like, I can't wait to get home and work on it some more. <laughs> so I'm stitching this on 32 count light mocha Belfast linen, which is the called for fabric. 
and I called for uh, one strand over two. And actually, Jeanette Douglas commented on my Instagram, which was like, fangirl moment. <laughs> uh, and she had said that kind of like back in the day. So I don't know when, when was this published? 2015, so not that long ago. Um, a lot of people were using 32 count versus kind of in the last few years, a lot of people have migrated to using 36 and 40. And so it was just common to use one strand of silk, regardless of the fabric count you used. She said if she were to restitch this piece now, she would probably use a 36 or a 40 and use the one strand just for a little bit better, better coverage. Um, but I'm loving the coverage I'm getting with two strands, and I'm really happy I did that, even though it was a total mistake. <laughs> this beautiful satin stitch heart um, is just one strand. So I'm using one strand for the specialty stitches. Um, that's the only specialty stitch I've done so far, but I, the back stitch is also in one strand. And this gorgeous variegated color is a Gloriana silk in the colorway bluegrass, and it is stunning. Love it. So that is where I'm at so far, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just obsessed with this. It's so pretty. <laughs> so there are a lot of specialty stitches in this, but specialty stitches aren't hard, guys. We get to use our brains, which is very good. I am... Um, over the summer, well, from January to July, I was doing a rotation in geriatric psychiatry. So it's seeing patients 65 and older and primarily seeing people with dementia. And um, during that rotation, I was very motivated to just use my brain as much as possible so it can stay healthy as long as possible. So specialty stitches, you heard it from me here. This is your prescription from your resident cross-stitch doctor to do specialty stitches to keep your brain sharp, okay? I know they're hard, they can be hard. Just follow the instructions, use your brain and you will stay healthy, okay? <laughs> okay. I'll write that as a prescription. If anyone needs one, just message me and let me know. Um, <laughs> so anyway, there's there's quite a few specialty stitches, but they are all very nicely charted out um, beautifully. So it's quite easy to, I guess I could probably show this. So there's huge diagrams that show you how to do it. So the main chart is in the center of the booklet. Um, I'll show you a little bit here. So it's kind of open and you can see the full chart and then there's individual instructions for all the specialty stitches. So this booklet has probably like 15 pages in it. I don't know if it says how many pages, nine pages in it, but all the specialty stitches are really clearly explained. So like this whole row is specialty stitches, all different ones. But guys, the thing is with specialty stitches, it's mainly just making lines. So you're like coming up at one hole, coming down at one hole. Instead of making an X, you're making lines. Right? So the satin stitch was just making straight lines of varying lengths in a specific pattern. You can do that. It's not hard. It's good. It's good for you. Um, so I don't let specialty stitches throw you off. They are very doable. And like I mentioned before, they're very good for your brain. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. So yeah, so I'm really excited to do all of these. Um, another great video to watch if you're at all intimidated by special, specialty stitches is Sarah, the Stitch and Mommy. Just put out a video where she does a stitch with me and she's doing some specialty stitches. And it's a great video to kind of take away some of the scare of doing specialty stitches. So I'll link that video below and I highly recommend it because she makes it very, sorry, very approachable and um, breaks down how it's not that tricky. You just follow the instructions and you can do it. And there's tons and tons and tons of YouTube tutorials out there. If there's a specialty stitch you're struggling with, just Google that specialty stitch and video. So say, you know, there's one specialty stitch here that is the uh, queen stitch. So if you're having trouble with that, just go to Google, type in queen stitch video or queen stitch video tutorial, and you should get a bunch of videos that come up. And sometimes watching a couple of different videos can help because everyone has their own teaching style and way that they teach how to do something and sometimes watching a couple different ones can help it click or maybe the way one particular person teaches it is more helpful for you. So the moral of this very long rant is <laughs> don't be afraid of specialty stitches. If there's a chart you love and there's specialty stitches, just go for it. If you love the chart, you're going to be willing to put in the work and remember it's good for your brain. Okay, end rant. <laughs> Let's just show you this one more time because it's so pretty. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, that is all the cross stitch talk for now. I'll have a bunch of um, stash acquisitions to show you at the end of the video, as well as a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna show you some knitting stuff now. So if you're one of those people who for some strange reason doesn't like it when I show knitting, just fast forward and you can get to more stitchy stuff and enter the giveaway, okay? But I hope you'll stay because I love knitting and I want you all to love knitting too.
Okay, let's show you what I've been knitting. The first knitting project I have is a finish. So I'm very excited to show you this finished shawl. And here it is. So let's show you if I can. So this gorgeous shawl is called Invincible Summer by Sosu Knits, who is Suzanne Summers or Somners. And it is so beautiful. I love this. Let me just show you how I wear it. So I was recently watching Fruity Knitting and they had an interview with Melanie Berg or Berg who showed how she styles asymmetrical shawls. So this is an asymmetrical triangle. One side is longer than the other one. And what she did is she started with the long end first and wrapped that around her neck and then wrapped the whole business around I don't know if you can see this, but I'll... So yeah, how cute and cozy is this? I love it so much. I've worn this like multiple days since I wore the, uh, since I finished it. So I love it. It's so cozy. I think this is my first finished project where I knit brioche. Might not be, but I can't remember. Um, and I am obsessed with brioche. So this project was um, great for brioche practice. I don't know if I'd recommend it for a brioche beginner, but I don't know. I was a brioche beginner and I just was like, throw me in the deep end. But there's both one color and two color brioche in this. So it was really great to get me familiar with all the different uh, techniques. So um, let me just take this off for a second so you can see better. Um, but basically you start at one point and you gradually increase. So here's the one color brioche little triangles. And then you go into some two color brioche here as the colors fade. So there's four different colors. All of these are Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight. So it's an 80% merino, 20% nylon uh, fingering weight yarn superwash. And we'll see if I can remember all the color names. I already forget what this first one color name is, but if you go to my Ravelry project page, I have the color names all listed there. I think all of them are discontinued, so that's not super helpful for you. But basically, the pattern called for three colors that kind of fade into each other. So I chose like a purple to a pinky to a reddish, and then one popping like contrast color. So I used that orange for it. So to be honest, I forget all the names of these colors except for the orange. <laughs> so I used this purpley color first, which then faded into this like pinky purple color. So this is like the fading one where you are kind of alternating the two colors, and then it fades into this brighter pink one. And then you do this two color brioche with the um, the pinky color and then the orange. I know the orange color is punkin, P-U-N-K-I-N, P-U-N-K-I-N. Uh, and that was like an exclusive or a limited edition colorway from last fall. Um, but I just love that that brioche as the uh, the border here. And then you finished off with an I-cord bind off. So I love this shawl. It is so beautiful and cozy and wonderful. Um, so again, now that I know the proper way to style these. Uh, it's so cute and cozy and I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So yeah, this is, uh, it's also very fall, I think. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. I blocked this. So blocking uh, is super important, especially for shawls because it just like kind of loosens them up, opens up the fabric and just helps them lay nicely. So the way that I block my shawls is I soak it in warm water lukewarm water and I add a little bit of wool wash. So I have a bunch of different ones that I've gotten kind of as freebies from different yarn stores when I've ordered online. Um, but you can just use like regular uh, hand soap. I have done that too. Actually, maybe don't do that because I don't know if that's okay or not, but I did that. I've done that before. But basically add a safe for wool soap, <laughs> a couple of squirts and to your warm water and kind of agitate it so it gets bubbly and then put your um, shawl in it and I let it soak for about 15 minutes. Um, once that's done, I squeeze it out, making sure not to wring it because that can like felt the yarn, which you don't want, but just kind of squeezing it. So I squeeze out as much water as I can and I lay it out on my blocking wards. I got mine from Amazon. They're basically like giant, like foam puzzle pieces. <laughs> so I'll link those below. Uh, and I kind of put them together in the shape that I, I want my shawl. So it might be kind of like longer at the top and then fewer at the bottom. I stretch it out into the shape I want. And then I use some T pins which I use to pin it into place. So that way I can get like, you know, these defined points and stuff by pinning and stretching. And that way everything is kind of even, it's open, and it just makes the shawl look so, so nice. So that's how I block. Um, I block all my shawls. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to it because 
it does take up a lot of space. So I just do it on the floor in my bedroom and it takes up a lot of room on the floor and I have to make sure not to step on the pins, but it's worth it for how nice it makes the shelves look. So yeah, that is my Invincible Summer Shawl, which, you know, it's kind of a fall version, but I just love it. So I would highly recommend this pattern. It was very easy to follow and very well written and it is just so squishy and cozy and I love it. This other shawl finish is one I finished a while ago and I've already shown you, but I finally got around to blocking it. So I wanted to show it to you again now that it's blocked. Um, full disclosure, the ends are not all fully woven in, so you might notice an end or two. I did weave in the ends of my other shawl, but I just didn't get around to it for this one. So this is the Temperance Shawl by Malabrigo Yarns, and it is also an asymmetrical triangle shape. So it comes down into a point and then it has these long wings. And I love this one. So let's, with my newfound knowledge, let's style it for you. And we can then talk about the different yarns. This one's pretty long, so I can wrap it around a couple times as I whip my camera. Um, so here's this one, and obviously I'll weave in the ends so it's not looking bad like that. Uh, but yeah, this is also very cute and cozy and love it. Also quite fall-ish. So let's show you the colors in this. What's a good spot? So... This red, burgundy red, is by Smash Knits, and the colorway is Crunching Leaves. Yes, the um, lighter white beigey color is by Camp Fiber Yarns, and the colorway is oh, Eros and Psyche. Using that brain. <laughs> um, and then the green is by um, Brian Dye Works, and the colorway is Nori. So gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I love how it turned out. And it's amazing how much blocking helped open this up because, um, careful here, there is one section here of twisted rib. So the section here, and this was really bunched together after it was knit, but when I blocked it, it stretched out and now it's just so beautiful. So yeah, that is the temperance shawl. And this is a free uh, PDF download on Ravelry. I'll link it below. This pattern was so much fun to knit and I highly recommend it. So if you're at all interested, I'm gonna go back to my standard way of doing it just cause you know, uh, if you're at all inter interested in knitting this pattern, I would highly recommend it. And um, it was super fun. I really, really, really enjoyed it. You just need three colors, a fingering weight yarn. Um, all of these are 75, 25 um, merino nylon or 80, 20, uh, something of that ilk. And uh, it's a great one to use up three skeins. I did have a bit left over and in the process of making a pair of socks from those. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend that. So that is my temperance shawl. Next piece I have is an almost finish. I am so close to finishing it, but I just have the bind off left to do, which is taking a little while and I kind of have been putting it off. So this is the freeze frame shawl by Monster Knits. And I am so close to being done. So again, an asymmetrical triangle shawl, which is kind of my favorite style because it's so easy to wear. This one is a little bit shorter. So how I would style it is I would put the point in the middle and then just bring the two sides around. Um, for ones that are a bit shorter, that's a great way to do it. If it's a bit longer and is going to wrap around a couple times, then the way I showed before where you start with one of the points around and then wrap it works really great. But yeah, I am so close to being done. All I have left to do is this bind off in the black. Um, so it's an I-cord bind off and it's just like really long and the one day I was like, I'm bored, I don't want to do that. But look how amazing this shawl is. It's all twisted. Uh, I love these colors. It was so fun to do this. This is all slip stitch. So um, in each row you're only knitting with one of the colors. So on a row where you're knitting with white, you'd slip the black stitches. On a row you're knitting with black, you slip the white stitches. So it's very easy to do and it makes the back look pretty cool. So this will benefit greatly from a blocking just to get it all nice and even, but it is so, so pretty. And the yarn I'm using for this is Briggs and Little Durasport. I got this yarn from Little Red Mitten uh, online. And so this color is obviously black and this color I think is natural, natural or cream. I can't remember the name of it, but obviously it's black and white. Uh, so yeah, this has been really fun to knit and I will get that last little bit done eventually that bind off. So hopefully by my next recording, this will be my little um, challenge to myself to get that bind off done and to block it because I really want to wear this one. Uh, 
I wear my shawls a lot. I just love how cozy and warm they are. So I wear them a lot um, around the house. I wear them to work, wear them out. Um, just find them a really versatile accessory, especially because I tend to wear a lot of neutral colors like the white sweater I'm wearing today. So it's nice to add a little bit of like fun color or texture with the shawls. So yes, I do wear them and I love them and I will not stop knitting them anytime soon because even if I have 300 shawls, that's still not even as many. I would still have to repeat them within a year. So technically I need 365 shawls. <laughs> not really. Um, so yeah, that is my freeze frame shawl. I got two more shawl whips to show you. So stay tuned or please hang in there and then I'll show you some uh, stitching stash I've got in the mail. Next one I'm showing, um, I'm really enjoying knitting on. This is the Love and Joy Shawl by Casey Knits. And I started this as part of a knit along, which is the um, Casey Knits, Casey Shawl KAL 2021, I think is the hashtag. I'll show you my yarn that I'm using first. Um, my cakes are kind of collapsing on themselves, um, but I'm really loving this yarn. So this first one is the colorway Grape. That's pretty accurate right there. Uh, this is by Comfy Cozy Knits. I'm in her merino single space, so it's 100% merino uh, single ply, so it's not twisted at all. Uh, it's beautiful. It's soft and lovely and gorgeous, and I just ordered a bunch more of her merino singles because I'm loving it so much. So that's Colorway Grape. The other one I have is by Things Created Equal, um, Canadian Dyer. Comfy Cozy Knits is also Canadian Dyer, and this is on her um, single sock base. I think it is. It's also a single ply, 100% merino yarn. And this is kind of my multicolored fun one. Uh, so I really like the color, these two colors together. The pattern suggested using either two highly variegated yarns that are highly contrasting or using a variegated in the contrast, something that really will play off of each other. And I'm really liking how this is working. So here's where I'm at now. I hope that's the correct side. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so here's where I am. This is a triangular shawl. So you start at the center versus the um, asymmetrical triangle shawls I showed you earlier. You start at one tip and knit that way. Um, this way you start here and increase your way out, which is really fun. So lots of fun, different textures and stuff. We have these garter stripes. We have this slip stitch uh, garter, which is fun and blocking will help this kind of stretch out and become the same shape. There's these eyelets and it kind of just repeats. So I am, I think I only have a couple sections to go. So I kind of stalled on it because the next section is one of these slip stitch rib sections, but in the carnival colorway, and it takes a bit longer than stock or sorry than garter stitch. So I got a bit um, held up on that, but I'm really really liking this um, how these two colors play together, and uh, it's really fun. So this one will be worn like so, and this uses up pretty much every last yard of two skeins. So it's really great for using up those two beautiful skeins of yarn you have. Okay, one more shawl whip. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I was working at um, the hospital in Kentville, Nova Scotia. So uh, twice a week, or twice a week, twice a month, I work at one of the more rural hospitals here in Nova Scotia. And I was in Kentville and during one of the days, it wasn't super busy. So I decided to hit up one of the local yarn shops there which is Gaspro Valley Fibers, and they have so many beautiful things there. I was on the lookout for some yarn to use for the Cinnabar Shawl by Andrea Mowry, which I just fell in love with when I saw, um, and I am so happy with the yarn I got. It is just so beautiful. So let me show you the yarn first, and then I will show you um, my whip. So this first color, oh, oh, I can't even, it's so beautiful. This first color it doesn't have a name. It's by, um, oh goodness, Mineville Yarn Cooperative. Mineville, Mineville Wool Project. I'll link it below. No longer available. So Mineville Wool Project, or whatever it's called, <laughs> they do, they're from Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia Dyers, and they do kind of limited runs of different bases. So this is a DK base, and I believe it is 75% merino, 25% nylon, something like that but it is just gorgeous. This gorgeous greeny gold color. I am obsessed with it. It is so, so beautiful. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I got that and then to go with it, um, I got this one, which is from Handmade in Fine Yarns, which is also a Nova Scotia based dyer. And this is their Casba base, which is 80% merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. 
and this is technically a fingering weight, but in 115 grams, there's 325 meters. So that's more of a sport weight. And this pattern did call for a sport weight yarn. So I figured I could use this. And the very helpful um, sales associate at Gasparo Valley assured me I could use it. So, <laughs> so this gorgeous color is cranberry chutney. And there's just this little hint of some yellowy colors. And I thought the two of these together were just a match made in heaven. So those are the colors I'm using for my cinnabar shawl. And I'll show you my whip. And this is just the softest, squishiest, most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So hopefully you like it too. Um, so here's where I'm at so far. Is that not just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So this pattern is really fun. There's two color brioche. Um, and then the other side is two color garter stitch. And so you can see that um, partway through we switched to using a different color as the dominant color and then switch back. And the fun thing about two color brioche is the back looks completely different because, so that's the front, that's the back because the opposite color is the dominant color. So it's really fun, you can wear it either way. Um, but I am loving knitting on this. It is, it's slow going. Two color brioche is not quick, but it's just so beautiful. And I'm using Nova Scotia yarns, which is super exciting. And I just am in love with these colors, like this gold. Is everything to me I just love it so that is my uh, cinnabar shawl with these gorgeous 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 yarns <laughs> I'm clearly breathing in too many yarn fumes and I'm going a little bit um, wild <laughs> but anyway that is for my cinnabar shawl and I'm loving knitting on it okay now that you made it this far let's talk about some cross stitch acquisitions and a giveaway I have let's show you the stuff I've gotten lately <laughs> So I got this chart quite a while ago, um, Past and Present by Rosewood and Inner Designs. Isn't that stunning? Again, lots of specialty stitches. I got all of the uh, floss for it. So there, it's mostly DMC, but it calls for um, one color of Weeks Dye Works, Pelican Gray, um, two DMC Pearl Cottons, and then a Dinky Dye Silk, as well as some beads. So I kitted it up, um, but I haven't gotten fabric. I don't know why I didn't get fabric. So I recently placed an order with 123 Stitch and I got the fabric for it, which is a 28 count cream cashew linen. You need a massive piece, 27 by 36. I think the sampler itself um, works out to be about 20 by 20. So I didn't need um, 36 inches, but an 18 by 27 piece wouldn't be quite big enough. So I'm looking forward to starting this in the next little bit. I think it is just so beautiful. I think I'll probably leave out this wrought by my hand piece. Um, yeah, I just, I don't love that part, but everything else I love. So I think I would just leave that out. So I'm excited to start that one soon. The other chart I got when I placed an order, so well, but several other charts I got was Winter Rose Quaker. And this was also one that I was enabled by Lori, <laughs> Lori Holt, um, because she was stitching on it and it was just so gorgeous. So this is by With Thy Needle and Thread, uh, Brenda Gervais, Winter Rose Manor, and look how beautiful that is. So I'm hoping to start that this winter. It's just gorgeous. I got some of the, I think it mostly calls for classic color works. Uh, it calls for classic color works, uh, Gentle Arts, and Weeks Dye Works. And oh, I didn't even open up the chart yet, but it's like in color and it's gorgeous. Oh my goodness, so nice. I'm just give you a little sneaky peeky, but like, look how nice that is. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really, really excited to stitch this. It's so pretty. So pretty. Okay, the other two charts I got from 123 Stitch are, um, so I'm working on Spring Quakers by Rosewood Manor, which Caroline from Evertotes did a Leo and Roxy floss conversion to. I haven't worked on that in a little while, but I'm working on it and it will get done eventually. But in my head, Caroline is going to be doing conversions for all the other pieces in the series because obviously there's a spring summer fall and winter um she's only confirmed that she's doing the winter one as a conversion so far but I'm just you know she's gonna do the rest of them <laughs> so in preparation I got the summer Quakers chart I'm sensing like kind of a rosewood manor theme here I'm just really loving her charts lately uh so that's summer Quaker and like oh my goodness it's so beautiful super super gorgeous and then I also got winter Quakers why I didn't get autumn Quakers, I don't know. I think I probably just forgot to order it, but. Uh, so here's winter Quakers, and Caroline uh, told me that she will be doing a conversion for this in the next few months to Leo and Roxy Floss, so I'm really excited for that. And just like, look at those cardinals, I love it. So, so, so pretty. So I'm really excited to stitch this chart. Okay, so that was 
all of these stash I've purchased lately. I got a lovely package in the mail from History Steak Mooster and Dorothy. Uh, so I had commented on one of her new releases because it was a beautiful Quaker bird sampler and I loved it. And then she messaged me and asked if she could send me a kit for it, which was so sweet of her. And when it came in the mail, she had also sent along a bonus chart so I can give away to one of you. So thank you so much, Dorothy. You are too sweet and too generous and your charts are amazing and I must stitch every single one of them in the, you know, free time I do have. <laughs> so let me show you first the kit because I really love how it's packaged. So this is Ackworth Birds 2. So the Birds 1 chart I'll show you in a second because that's the giveaway. So it comes in this really fun um, envelope. So I'll open that up just so I can show you everything. But I really liked how it came in this envelope because you can, um, it's basically like a project bag. So that was great. Um, so this is the chart of Ackworth Birds 2, and oh my goodness, if this isn't me, I don't know what is. These gorgeous pinks, which I love, um, the medallions, the Quaker, is just fantastic. So this uh, chart calls for um, silk floss. Um, it also is charted in DMC, so on the back you have the silk floss colors or the DMC conversion and how many skeins you need of each, which is awesome. Um, Dorothy sent me the silks for it, and they are so pretty. So let's see if I can hold all these. I probably can't, but <laughs> so here are some of them. So these are the Alvera Soie. Uh, Soie, I'm gonna mess, I'm not gonna say that right. I wanna say goblins, but it's probably not how you say it. <laughs> so those are the three of the colors and then here are the other three. Oops. Oh, I think I can hold them all together. Oh, I can do it. Believe in myself, okay. Okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> So there's all the colors and like, oh my goodness. I was showing these to my boyfriend. He's like, I actually really like those colors. And I was like, yes, converting him to liking these colors. <laughs> He's very much like a blue person and I am all about like the reds and pinks. So slowly we are converting him. And I also don't mind switching with blue, but yeah. So that is the gorgeous silk for this. And then it also came with the fabric, which is a 36 count. Um, I believe this is flax Edinburgh linen. So these colors, I'll just hold up one of them, are going to look so good on this. And I can't wait to start this. So like constant refrain, can't wait to start this, can't wait to start this. There's so much to start. Uh, also came with a needle. So amazing. I highly recommend um, getting kits from them because it actually shipped pretty quickly um, from Germany. Pretty sure they're in Germany. Uh, came really quickly, beautifully packaged. Amazing. So that is the Ackworth Birds two and what I have for you is Ackworth Birds one. So this is the chart, um, not a kit, just the chart paper pattern. Um, it's so beautiful. I think I'm going to end up buying this one. I think it's on the Silk app so I'll probably end up buying this one and stitching it as well um, as companion pieces but maybe doing them in a different colorway. I don't know but it's gorgeous. This uses the same colors. Let me just double check. Yeah same colors as the Ackworth Birds two. Um, so how beautiful is this? So I am doing this as a giveaway. So I will mail this anywhere in the world. If you are interested in winning this chart, leave me a comment down below and in your comment include the word, where is it? Birds, <laughs> B-I-R-D-S. Um, so use that in your comment and I will do a uh, random comment picker um, at the time I record my next video to pick the winner. Again, I'll ship it anywhere. So if you are interested in this, leave me a comment and hopefully you win. And if you don't win, buy the chart because it's amazing. <laughs> So, okay, this video is getting long, but I have just so much to talk about because it's been a month. So, okay, hang in there because there's some goodies that are still coming. The next thing I want to talk about is a stitch along I'm going to be hosting uh, for the Moonshine Cabin Pattern by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. So any of you who follow Caroline at Evertotes or at Off the Grid Needle Arts, uh, she's been carrying a lot of Jacob's charts and, um, which are calling for Leo and Roxy floss, which is amazing floss. I love it. It's so good. Bye. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but Carolyn had reached out to me a little while ago asking if I would be interested in hosting a stitch along for this because Jacob is coming out with so many amazing pieces and Caroline's like, I just can't keep up with stitching all of them. <laughs> so I was more than happy to oblige because, you know, I love stitching Jacob's pieces too. So that is on the way uh, in the mail to me. Um, so it is the, um, she has it available in different kits. 
and I can't I can never remember how to pronounce this word H Y G G E. So I'm just going to say H Y G G E. So I do not mispronounce it, but she basically has these available as kits with, um, the amazing veal and Roxy floss, the fabric, this gorgeous, like dark black gray fabric, um, and a bunch of different counts, the chart paper pattern, and you can also get it with um, some gorgeous project bags that she has made, which are these adorable house prints. So check that out. I'll link it below. Um, I still have to confirm with her the date that we're going to be starting the stitch along because I want to make sure that everyone can get their um, chart and kit in time so that you, know, you don't feel like you're being left out or anything. But it might be that we start the stitch along before everyone has their charts. And that's OK, because you can catch up because I'm not going to be finishing this. Um, you know, in lightning speed because there's so many other things I'm working on, but I'm really excited. And what I'm currently thinking is sometime around um, Canadian Thanksgiving, but I'll check with Caroline and I'll post it on Instagram. So follow me there if you're interested in joining the Stitch Along. Um, the hashtag for this will be H-Y-G-G-E-S-A-L. I'm going to attempt to pronounce it. I think it's Hugue. I hope, I hope, Hugue Sal. Uh, so hopefully you can join in for it. It's such a cute piece and I'm really excited to stitch it. Um, also, if you haven't checked out Jacob's latest floss tube video, please check it out. He has some gorgeous new releases that I am so excited to stitch. Um, the one that caught my eye the most and that I am so excited to start is the, oh goodness, Love Wins. I think it's called Love Wins. If it's not, I'll write what it's called. But anyway, it is gorgeous. I love the quote on it. I love the Quaker motifs. I love that it's stitched in black. I can't wait to start it. I have an order of uh, Leo and Roxy floss in the colorway charcoal coming. Um, it calls for chalkboard, but that's currently sold out because everyone loves it. <laughs> so um, I'm really excited to get that. And you can get that pattern um, either as a PDF from Jacob or if you want the paper pattern and floss, you can get that from Caroline. So super excited to start that. I'm also hoping to start in the next little bit um, the pattern True Comfort, also by Jacob, and it has a Jane Austen quote, which I love, and I just think this pattern is so beautiful, and I can't wait to start it like all the other things I can't wait to start. <laughs> and then I mentioned I also have like six other shawl patterns I want to start. Yep. Let's just say I am absolutely never bored, which is great. <laughs> Okay, I think that's all I have for you uh, this time. Hopefully that was um, not overly long. It was the right amount of long where it kept you, you know, entertained and enabled and all of that good stuff. Um, my plan is to record again in about a month. Um, that's my plan. I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, so that's all I have for today. I'll just leave you with a couple of pictures. Um, my boyfriend and I went to a family wedding over the past weekend and it was just so beautiful by the ocean. Um, just a lot of fun. So I'll put in a couple pictures there just so you can see how gorgeous Nova Scotia is basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all I have for this time around. I'll see you again in about a month. Um, make sure to enter the giveaway by including the word birds in your comment. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I'm stitching on, I try to include all the information in the drop down box below. If for some reason I don't link something, um, because sometimes I forget, just leave me a comment and I'll make sure to add that in and send you any information. Yeah, that's all I got to talk about this time. So, so good to hang out with all of you again. Um, I just love keeping up with all of you on Instagram and FlossTube, and I'm just so grateful to be part of this wonderful stitching and knitting community. So until then, guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.